Now to Tuesday's critical Georgia runoffs, which will determine control of the Senate. The latest 538 polling averages show the race is nearly deadlocked. Republican incumbent David Perdue trails Democratic challenger John Ossoff by about a percentage point in the regular election, while Senator Kelly Loeffler, who was appointed to fill a vacancy, trails her Democratic challenger, the Reverend Raphael Warnock, by almost two points in the special election. Our correspondent, Rachel Scott, is in Atlanta with the very latest. Good morning, Rachel. Martha, good morning. And Georgia already seeing record voter turnout for a special election. More than three million have already cast their ballot here. But with just 48 hours to go, one of the Republicans in the race, Senator David Perdue, is now on the sidelines. He is in self-quarantine after coming into close contact with a campaign staffer who tested positive for COVID-19. And the stakes could just not be higher. Republicans are calling this their last line of defense. Democrats say what happens here in Georgia will set the course of Joe Biden. Biden's presidency. So to pull this off, Democrats would have to win both of their races. That would bring the split in the Senate to 50-50, and then Vice President-elect Kamala Harris would serve as the tie-breaking vote. But if one of those Democratic candidates lose just one of their races, Republicans will be hanging on to majority in the Senate. And at this point, it's all about turning out the base to vote. So that's why tomorrow you will see President Trump and President-elect Joe Biden campaigning here. Even though Biden was the first Democrat to win the state of Georgia in nearly 30 years, runoff elections in this state have largely favored Republicans. But then on the flip side, you have some Republicans who are concerned that the president's own words, that the election is rigged, that these runoffs are invalid, will then cost them majority in the Senate, Martha. And Rachel Scott, thanks very much. For more, let's bring in the former Democratic leader in the Georgia House of Representatives and the founder of Fair Fight, Stacey Abrams. Good morning to you. We've seen those polls that give Democrats a slight edge, but is there anything you're seeing on the ground that gives you concern? No concern, just a great deal of urgency. We did very well in vote by mail. We did very well in early vote. But we know Election Day is going to be the likely high turnout day for Republicans. So we need Democrats who haven't cast their ballots to turn out. And if they have any questions, to go to IWillVote.com to find their polling places. And two months ago, even as Joe Biden was winning Georgia, John Ossoff trailed Republican David Perdue by nearly 90,000 votes. And in the special election, the Republican candidates combined for nearly 50,000 more votes than the Democrats. I know that roughly 75,000 new voters have been registered since early November. But how certain are you that those are Democrats? We're very certain that most of those are Democrats given the composition based on race and age. And let's be clear, we know a number of the people who voted for Joe Biden as Democrats sometimes just skipped the rest of the ballot. They came out to vote for the president because you have a number of low propensity voters who came out for Democrats. What we're so excited about is that we haven't stopped reaching those voters. Millions of contacts have been made, thousands of new registrations have been held, and we know that at least 100,000 people who did not vote in the general election are now voting in this election. And they, again, are disproportionately young and disproportionately people of color. And, and does the fact that Biden outperformed the Senate races indicate that his win really was more about President Trump than it was representative of some kind of ideological shift to the left in the state? Not at all. We know that for new voters, especially new voters of color, there's a tendency to only vote in races where they are certain of the outcome. They know Joe Biden. Joe Biden's been a part of American politics for 40 plus years. And so for a number of new voters, they're going to vote only when they're confident. That's why we spent this time over the last nine weeks educating voters about John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock. They've crisscrossed the state and we believe we've closed that distance and that the voters that are turning out now absolutely know them and are standing by their sides and voting for them. And, and you talk about that enthusiasm and getting them out to vote and how you're doing it, and they know about these two candidates. But if they didn't come out in the general election, how are you convincing them of the importance of, of the Senate race? In fact, it's the Republicans who've done it for us. Their refusal to pass $2,000 relief checks, their refusal to support municipal governments, where you have a lot of people who are frontline workers. You've got firefighters and teachers and municipal workers who have been struggling to make certain that families survive the COVID-19 pandemic, and Republicans balked at providing any support. 
the hypocritical idea that it's okay to support business, but not to support the business of government, the business of serving the people, has really galvanized voters. They feel the very real consequences of COVID-19 here in Georgia, where we've had more than 630,000 infections, we have more than 10,000 deaths, and we have hospitals at capacity. Republicans have no intention of responding to COVID-19, and they know we need a president-elect Joe Biden to have a partnership in the Senate, and that's why Joe Biden needs Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff. And, and, and Joe Biden and President Trump will be there tomorrow. Do you believe that President Trump's continuing un unsubstantiated claims that the election there and across the nation was rigged hurt him there? I think it's always dangerous to undermine the integrity of elections without evidence. When we challenged voter suppression, we were able to prove it. We were able to correct for it in many ways. And that's why we saw a dramatic increase in turnout from 2018 to 2020, where more voters were able to cast their ballots and have those ballots counted. In contrast, the continued notion that undermines the elections, I think, is having a deleterious effect on Republicans. But my mission is to ensure that everyone trusts the system and that we make certain that it's a system that's worthy of that trust. And, and you know that or some rep Republicans are arguing that President Trump's efforts to undermine the election are no different than yours in 2018, where you did not concede the gubernatorial race. I know you say that is different, it's different circumstances, but are you concerned about that reputation? Well, it's not simply different circumstances, it's apples and you know bowling balls. I pointed out that there were a series of actions taken that impeded the ability of voters to cast their ballots. And in almost every one of those circumstances, the courts agreed, as did the state legislature. We saw the evisceration of exact match. We saw a consent decree to make certain that people could vote by absentee without having their ballots discarded. We saw an expansion of training and an investment in local polling places so people had the ability to go and cast their ballots. We saw a reduction of lines from eight to 10 hours to 30 minutes, two hours. These are all things we proved both in court and we saw remedies to. By contrast, President Trump has lost every single one of his challenges in the state of Georgia, and he has no evidence. In fact, an audit, the fourth, I think, of this election, found that there was zero fraud in our signature match process. One person acted or inadvertently signed for her husband against the rules, but otherwise we know that the signatures match and that the process works. Okay, and we're going to leave it there. Good luck to you this week. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.